But if you were to truly get a glimpse of the Lord Jesus' glory, you would see that Jesus was more than a man. He was also God. To get a glimpse of Jesus' glory would change everything. Matthew 17, verses 1 through 8. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. The voice of, from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Jesus selects Peter, James, and John to see a glimpse of his glory. He takes them up a high mountain and is transfigured before them. The word transfigured is English for a Greek word that is very, very close to our word for metamorphosis, which means to change in constitution or physical form, like a caterpillar into a butterfly. But here, Jesus didn't become a different person. He literally starts to shine. It says, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Okay, why would Jesus choose Peter, James, and John to experience this? It may be that Jesus wanted to straighten these guys out. Remember, Peter just challenged Jesus about going to the cross to die. And James and John, if, if you remember uh, later in Matthew, they'll, they'll be fighting to see who can sit on the right hand of Jesus in the left hand uh, in his kingdom. But more likely, Jesus chose these three witnesses to testify later to what they saw here. As each of these men would become a powerful part of starting the early church. Peter actually refers to this experience, or we believe he refers to this experience in, in his letter, 2 Peter, in chapter 1, saying, We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Two men were seen talking with Jesus, Moses and Elijah. And seeing this, Peter says, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. The Gospel of Mark gives us a bit of an explanation why Peter made or said this. It says, For he did not know what he was saying, for they were terrified. So Peter, in his misguided zeal, was in a way suggesting that Jesus, Moses, and Elijah were somehow on equal footing Moses was a great prophet. Elijah was a great prophet. But Jesus is the great prophet. Amazingly, for the second time in the book of Matthew, God the Father talks audibly, interrupting Peter. He identifies Jesus as his son, and he places Jesus as the one and only that we should be looking to. He says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. There's a significant point here that we dare not miss. In Matthew's record of this historical event, we have six of the most significant people in biblical history. Moses, Elijah, Peter, James, John, and Jesus. This passage clearly places Jesus as the focus. After God had finished speaking, it says, when the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and they were terrified. But Jesus came 
touched them saying, rise and have no fear. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Only Jesus. Listen to him. Matthew 17, verses 9 through 13. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. And the disciples asked him, Then why do the scribes say that first Elijah must come? And he answered, Elijah does come and he will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come and they did not recognize him, but did to him what they pleased. So also the Son of Man will certainly suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. Jesus commanded these three men, tell no one the vision until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Jesus was going to die for the sins of the world and rise again to life. But he wanted them to wait to tell this experience until Jesus' work was finished. Jesus was sure of the future. As they talked, the disciples asked Jesus, uh, why, the, why didn't Elijah come before the Messiah or before him? And they said, then why do the scribes say that first Elijah must come? And Jesus explained that the prophecy was true and has been fulfilled. Elijah does come, he says and he will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also the Son of Man will certainly suffer at their hands. It says then that the disciples understood that Jesus was speaking, referring to Elijah, he was actually speaking about John the Baptist. The people in Jesus' day didn't recognize John the Baptist as the fulfillment of that prophecy. Elijah has already come, but they did not recognize him. And they were not going to recognize Jesus as the Christ. And they were going to miss the significance of who he is. Don't miss who Jesus is. He is a man, but he's also the one true God. Here in this story, we see a, a glimpse of his glory. Jesus, God's son, took on human flesh, came and died on a Roman cross, offering forgiveness for our sins. He rose to life and lives today at the Father's right hand. Be sure not to miss Jesus. Lord, we can hardly imagine the scene. Jesus talking with Moses and Elijah on the mountain, his face and clothes shining like the sun. Give us a glimpse of Jesus' glory here in your word. May it change our perspective. And may we willingly follow him, recognizing Jesus as our rightful master and Lord. Thank you, Father. For who Jesus is and what he has done. As your divine son, he died in my place, offering forgiveness for my sins. Thank you. In the Lord Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.